wants to hear your views, you can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum Radio 1 and And Spectrum tonight, will it be possible for the URA to realize its revenue targets this year, considering the state of the economy and the limited tax base? The finance ministry set itself a target for this year, promising to provide up to 11.1 billion shillings from locally generated revenue. That is a total point. It falls squarely on the shoulders of the generating authority, the national tax code. Last year, the economy grew slow. 20 years after a high inflation set up national bank lending rates that denied low economic activity uh, as proved tax collections. The tax body thinks it will nonetheless have put in the target for this last year. It has also set itself a high target for this year, promising to collect some 7.25 trillion shillings up from the 6, 6 trillion shillings collected last year. There are war changes in the tax system proposed by the finance minister Maria Trumpe in Hapari. They include the raising of the threshold for the salary tax for pairs and 435,000 shillings to 930,000 shillings previously, which means less cash will come from this bracket. However, the tax body says it will write over this and other ways in this new year and beat all targets. In addition, it expects Nevada's tax collection to rise as a percentage of gross domestic product for 10% from 30% now. So, right on the spectrum, we seek to find out just how this will be given the obvious hardships and the revised plan for the IG Our guest tonight, Mrs. Alan Pezina, Commissioner General of the Federal Revenue Authority, you are most welcome, Madam Pezina. Thank you very much. She's accompanied by Simon Mungiwa. Simon, Simon Mungiwa, Coordinator in Tax Service Desk, Domestic Tax Department. You are most welcome, Simon. Also joined by Simon Mungiwa, a Supervisor in Tax Service Desk in the Domestic Tax Service Department. You are most welcome. Thank you. Madam Kajin, how was the job as tax performance for us? The last financial year, ending the 30th June, the tax collection was 6,208, and this average of 6,169. So we did uh, beat the, the target and generated the support of approximately 39 billion in value shares. And what is the expectation for this year? This year, the target, uh, the net target, is seven thousand two hundred and fifty billion in addition. And how will it be? How will it be? Well, um, there are two major ways. One, the economy is expected to grow, as you have just said. It has said to have two point two percent. This coming year, this year we're in, it's expected to at 5.4%. So that, that in itself generates revenue to the economic activity that uh, gives businesses profits. But also we have administrative measures that we put in place. For example, we think to expand our tax register by moving out into the distant stations and the distant districts. We've been um, close basically in about 31 districts. Uh, yes, we can do about 100 and 111 districts. So we will spread out mobile services in the most stations so that we can set this project for people. We will also link our, you know, our databases with other government databases. For so example, uh, NSSF has a huge database of uh, uh, employees. Uh, and so we can do that to happen to that. Government payments, if you look at who is being paid by government, because government is the biggest consumer of services, and it's consuming from the private sector, and it gives uh, people who should be on our register. So we think our database will match and we see who is not in our register, and then those who are not in the register. People like suppliers, so. Exactly. What percentage of you, what, what percentage of you are selling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't get people who are well, we think we could probably increase our tax register by about 30%, um, but it will require that the cooperation all around with other government agencies and um, uh, hopefully those who have good clean databases and the access to them will cross my to be able to do that. Let's talk, let's talk about the administrative measures that we have. We have this open system that 
Four years ago, we went into the test of information about domestic taxes uh, processes, and we have a system that we call Impact, which gives online services to the taxpayers for purposes of registration, for filing, returns, for payment, and also helping us for these taxpayers. So it's been very, very well. Let's talk about the weather. Do all the people pay taxes for <laughs> I wish they did. I really wish they did. Not all people who are registered pay taxes. So we monitor them using a measure called compliance ratios. We look at who is filing, for example, VAT, uh, excise, fares, and to be filed on a monthly basis. And then income tax. Well, we pay income tax once, but they may do a provision of it in the middle of the year. So we look at uh, are they filing regularly? And then they file their returns. Do they pay? And we have found that in the large tax pairs, actually in the medium tax pairs, we have good filing ratios of 80%. The medium, I mean the LTO, large tax pairs, 99%. That's really good. Our area of expansion now is in the small and micro. Those who are hard to use, those who are the money processes, those are the ones we want to use. So the big boys pay that tax. That's a big tax. That you have to be in <laughs> it's very difficult to hide when you're a large taxpayer. But you also have the interest in being visible, that's how your business goes. Yeah. I'd like to get some uh, information from you. Know, but before we go, let's talk a little bit about tax exemption. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Give us some examples of what happens. What are some Thank you very much, Well, for starters, one of the biggest challenges is. Uh, Tax collection is uh, uh, basically the poor work of the GPU by some of our students. Uh, this is the theory of the discussion that uh, many times when you have to go to business with the collect tax information, we start from a disadvantage because we need to take the through the report in the same place. And the other thing is we are used to the low allowance of the tax liability where the interest rate is sufficient. And so, the fact that we have to do that, it's a quick challenge for us to do it. You have like women in this case, a very strong one. Those are the past judges, I guess, and they say, you look at the roof of the very much with you. In this case, there is no meter involved. So, without, without the records, it becomes very difficult to make a fair assessment. So, you have to be a space player in this case. Give us some, let's give us a backdrop against the old system. When you're still in the finance, you need a certain amount of Give us a context of the piece of the ideas. Why did you still in the finance? Why did you still in the finance? Why did you still in the finance? And then I'll talk to you later. What was the reason? Previously, collection of taxes while they were under the legal administration, the legal partner, so that um, first of all, you need to get up information. There are no computers, no, there are no software. Uh, round about this time now, for example, if you wanted to find out. Uh, because you are automated, because you have all this information flowing around in your system, we are able to get down to specific details of tax collection. I'll give you an example. We are able to tell, for example, the performance of a particular industry. Okay? Previously, this was a bit difficult to come up with. Uh, we are able to tell the performance of a particular tax bracket, say, where you are, because now the information is flowing in. And then as, as the city has been seen in the field, we are able to post much better. Okay, now because you are, you are able to match better with other countries as well, then you are able to come up with a more clear picture of the taxpayers' issue. Alright, Mr. Ndavira, talk to us about the experience. What do the people like to do with taxpayers? Okay, please, please. 
Thank you very much. Uh, well, well, well. So much like to pay taxes. If someone had a choice, they probably avoid it. They want good sons, but they want good sons. Yeah. If they like good sons, they want good sons, but they don't want that. <laughs> sure. What we are seeing now is that uh, we have seen our compliance rate levels increasing, especially in the future, when we change our strategy. So, uh, we are more customer oriented. We look at taxpayers as our clients. Uh, we have gone out there to tell and sensitize them about tax. So, in this, we are beginning to reap the benefits. We are more cordial. Uh, we have a problem, they come to us, they have a challenge, we assist them on how to comply. Right away from the time they come for registration, we help them with how they can file their car. We continue to speak them such a guy that is real check, unlike what brought me. Then I must add a very professional service to the school of charity. I must add a one sign of charity to the We realize that uh, before we became autonomous, many people did not see much about taxation. When we became autonomous, we are more empowered to go out to the people who are about taxation and go to school. So, we feel that in the future, we will have a more compliant generation. In the future, our children will run the practice. Well, this is my business paper I'm already on. Tonight, will it be possible for you to realize that you will be done in the state of the economy? And we now have a tax base. I guess tonight, Mrs. Allen, the Commissioner General of the Organization of the Heritage, accompanied by Mr. Simon Mooney, coordinator in that service, in the domestic tax department, and, and Mr. Simon Gallian, supervisor in that service, in the domestic tax department. We will go across the discussion later with the government. We have a Madam, can you give us a profile of the general's tax? Uh, uh, taxation. Okay. Um, we collect the uh, following taxes: profit and profit and profit, which is income taxes, both at company level and at individual level. We collect uh, consumption taxes like uh, VAT uh, and excise duty, both for general services and goods. Uh, we collect. Um, International trade taxes by customs. And, um, we also collect uh, personal taxes, uh, payroll taxes by uh, payers' money. That's basically the, the regimes. Where does most of the money come from? Most of the money comes from two main areas. In the domestic taxes, most of the money comes from uh, the payers' yuan uh, regime and, and the VAT regime. But you have reduced the threshold for payers, you are not going to be strong. Mm-hmm. You have raised the threshold. You used to increase the one time, now you're going to be Actually, the, the, the raising of the threshold was a strategic move to allow more disposable income into the hands of the public so that they can consume more. Not only they can consume more, they are, they are also. Because, uh, as, as they consume, they pay tax because when you buy this water, then it's created. Creating uh, from a more disposable income than you have to pay. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. We have to pay. 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 We have to well, the regional tax is <laughs> the 10% on those who earn 120 million annually and above. Uh, it is going to be put on, because they will be expected to pay the 30%. Now, I think we are not, yes. But anyone who earns above 120 million then uh, incurs uh, another 10% on anything in addition. Anything about one and a half. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
about in the right. how much you expect to raise the I'm not sure. Do you want to do that? Well, that's what I'm going to do now. No, no, no. I think it's actually much more. Uh, or maybe that was because somebody is trying to get. Yeah. Why did you put a 10% because you just keep yourself? It's not a place for you. Well, we, we certainly are not compare income with uh, the Western world. Um, what we call rich is probably not rich in the world. So we are looking at the environment we are working in. We also think that success is progressing. So it's not more to do So in the future, we should watch the rich should watch Imagine it. Well, it's a bit more and more than tell about ten. Maybe we could be we could use another test. We can more than two hundred million. Yeah, twenty percent. Well, right now that's a bit speculative. Let's build what we have. You don't want to speculate. Right. Let's talk about tax exemption. Why do you continue to uh, accept uh, investors? Actually, there's so many exemptions in the that people don't talk about it, just jump on investors every time I hear this question. And um, let, let me give you the difference to the exemptions in our to your question. One, on international trade, customs, there are so many exemptions in the law which are given by the East African countries. And uh, every year we have an analysis of the, of the regional level. In the domestic taxes, uh, Regime, the income tax has a section for exempt income, section for income specifically, gives you all the exempt income. And it's available to anybody who is in that, uh, in, in that area. The VAT has a schedule of exempt, uh, exempt uh, supplies and exempt goods. All these are in the It's not that they are available just for a particular select a group of people that are available for anybody who will engage themselves in that activity. In addition, those who come in to invest and have big capital investments, they have uh, depreciation allowances, they have carryover losses, and you can actually carry over your losses, in, but they need to be not cut. So if all these are facilities are already there for anybody who will engage in business. However, in governments, um, development priority, there are sectors that governments want to stimulate uh, because when those, 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 those sectors grow quickly, the economy expands faster, the economy grows faster. Uh, you remember in 2007, just before we crossed the program, we had to facilitate the, the hotels, you know, building, build more rooms, have more conference uh, rooms available, and we have benefited as a country when you look at the number of conferences and seminars and coming to Uganda, as compared to them, there's been an exponential growth. Tourism has grown, and we ourselves, Ugandans, are now using those conference facilities to them for benefit. And so that in itself has stimulated the economy. The, the other area is in export promotion. We, because we are basically an agricultural country, we produce a lot of raw material. But we are disadvantaged when we export the material. So we must add value to what we export. The government gives exemptions to those who uh, process and export so that they can compete favorably in the European market. Otherwise, if they have huge production costs here, they will never compete in Europe. They will never compete in China. So we, we facilitate those who invest in particular sectors because they grow in China here. And when you come to the world, I'm happy to go. During uh, the World Bank, I show that the IOC and the financial bank, they found that 97% of the investors that exempt the tax will pay taxes, and it's great to the very small degree. It is true, but it is not true. Because the IOC has a very large study, but one must look at that study in context. Because the we are in a regional block, but in a sense, for domestic taxes, we are still countries. How do I invite people into Uganda when they could just as easily go to Zambia or Kenya or anywhere else who can give them better advantages, partner with better infrastructure? So, whereas uh, 
investors would still stay if they didn't look in, in, in uh, examples. But why should they come to Uganda? What would they not do? To another country who has a port, for example, it has a better rail system, which has a power, stable power supply. So it is a matter of wanting people to establish themselves here. When they do, and they are profitable, they will pay them. And in any case, it's not like they are totally exempted. These people consume our products here. They do have the risk, so they do pay tax. Okay. So, would you like to talk to us about this news and the market for the price? you have any questions? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. On the first of July, this year, we launched our new integrated system. And uh, it is another component of, 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 of the online uh, tax system that we have to do. So the integrated system is here to go um, especially in our case. Number one, so data based and adaption. Most secure online uh, transaction. Um, now, Simon is giving us some particular feel that so far we have been in a different laboratory and uh, we will take out this piece so far. Um, in addition, maybe we can talk about the fact that most motor vehicle services here are going to be in a different way. So what's happening? Um, for you to be able to transact online, you have to use online systems to be able to transact. You have to have a new uh, logbook that is issued by the system. In other words, for the system to allow you to transact, it must not be there, and you are paid as well. So in doing that, what we are asking people to do is that first they have to get the details of the data into a system. So we have a process for that. Then we go into our website, and then we go up and we find the facility that allows you to check on that data that, uh, about your vehicle. Or vehicles. We're playing in which you're going to PC a new brand new lock of all the data. Going to a computer, typing the data from your website, and eventually you get a new lock of So you log in and then you go to the URL, you pay them some money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not like the new ID, you know how to think about the ID. It was here at the start, then it was here, and then it was night, and then it was night. Listen, as this is special already, one. Now, maybe possible for you to realize the same thing as this time. Look at the program, how to have this. What are you going to do? What's the reason for having to do? You know, 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 Remember me, not for the moons I pull. All the gods I score. My people, my passions on target. My footwork, my tough defense. Don't remember me for the score, for whether I won or lost. Remember me because I play, because I lift up my boots. And I step onto the beach. Remember me because I listen to the voice inside and with everything in me. I play. As the Airtel Rising Stars Tournament heats up, we are giving you the chance of a lifetime. Send ARS to 6333 and start a chance to win a fully paid trip for two to the UK to watch a Premier League match. That's not all. You can win 1 million shillings, soccer balls daily at 2.5 million shillings, or a jersey from your favorite team every week. SMS ARS to 6333 and win with the Airtel Rising Stars. Airtel. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage, and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper. And also help friends see potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So he's to more like John. He'll make a difference. Who will join Nile Special? 
the rich satisfying taste from the sauce. Now special, you've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum. Now it's really impossible for the new area to realize that the Kalex is a national year. Considering the state of the country and the limit of customers. This is Alan Pedina, Commissioner General of the Kalex Authority, Mr. Simon Mayer, Coordinator in Tax Service Bears, the Middle of the Mercy Department, and Mr. Simon Mayer, Supervisor in Tax Service Bears, in the Middle of the Mercy Department, the Middle of the Mercy Mr. Miller, a little bit more about the medical board. All your books are going to be given out in very, very soon. Several months later. What's going to happen? You're going to place all your books. What's going to happen is that uh, once we've had your data, uh, we should get over to you, I should do the process. Uh, once it's been validated, yeah, we're going to do it. It's fitting a little bit. All car owners will go to your website, register their local address, just as a number, so on and so forth. Then they walk your office and get full of it. Yes. How's that? They are all dangerous. To give me a job in the practice. Yes, <laughs> So how is it going to benefit you, Harry? Really? How does it benefit? How will it benefit? Um, what, what, what you are a benefit from this is that we now get um, accurate data about the taxpayers and the vehicles that are out there and the roads. Yeah. At the moment, you don't have that. We don't have to worry about this. Let me just step in there, if you don't mind, because we had, uh, some years ago we discovered that there was a place who, where they were making logbooks. So we found that vehicles who had not paid tax were on the road and we put them in the police and found that they are logbooks, but they don't come for us. So what we, the, the system of putting in place is to ensure that we have all the, that they cannot be a vehicle on the road whose data we don't have. In other words, no one else can make this work. Even if they come and forge it, all you will simply do is log into a system and say, what I see on this paper, is that what your A has? Now, if you find it doesn't match, then that paper is. So the security of data is what is contained in the system. So if someone wants to, this information will be found. Absolutely. If you want to buy a new paper, and uh, you know, I go to your website, look at the logo. Very good, yes. It doesn't exist in your website, tell me it's not working. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It will exist, but the folder is another one. You're able to see that. Okay. Yeah. I'm genuinely buying from Mr. X. Right. I'm going to go through about these parts. Uh, if some people don't want to transfer their paper, because it's not going to affect your trade. You buy a paper and they hold it to pay, and it's safe and you're going to buy it. Let's not take care of it. It does affect us in terms of the other things. And uh, we don't have that moving into the economy and uh, research is available, which is also the same for the US and the US. It will make it easier for people to do that. To transfer, the problem is that the button of transfer of the data is on the same, the parcel is same, and the parcel is same. But does it break it? It's very straight and very clear. You're thinking about that. It's very good. Let's talk about the menu. Maybe this time, which areas do you want to do? Mainly, transportation. And if you can do follow the course, the best way you can have is cigarettes. And the food. And it's nice. And counter. And most of it is under valuation. Not our falsification. People tell me they're importing car batteries because they're carrying a battery and then they're putting it on. What they're doing is something else. How have you been able to pass that? Because we have these kind of batteries. How do you think it's possible? We have the smart wallet that we have. Yeah, basically we have this capacity. And then also, through automation, like you have just been told, some of these systems have been designed out high security level. Yeah? It's a very hard for one to be a system. Yeah. It's okay. going further and further. Mm -hmm. But of course, they are not sleeping. As we do this, they are also trying their best. Mm -hmm. Let's look at you know, a lot of people not sleeping. Some men used to come and sit outside their own uh, play with their computers and then collect that as a network. How do you do this? Uh, again, through our systems, we are able to detect that uh, something is not right. 
So basically, these were frauds as using I, very intelligent chapter, using I to build taxes. Collect taxes on your behalf from people outside, and you're able to get. How do, what does that say about this? Uh, Can I just look in there? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm interrupting, but uh, it's something that I've been really interested in. Uh, the system that was prepared to be is 12 years old. As you know, we have now been on the system. So, uh, what you're saying, cheating the person now is an occurrence that is, that, that is, I think it's about two years ago, because we started this, what we can call the story. So, we, we, as we interrogated the systems, we saw some funny movements. So, we traced the process and we realized that this was our account. This is an account coming from outside, and our security managers, IT security managers, found that there was intrusion at particular times in, in the year, I think it was between 2008 and up to 2010. And then we did this investigation and we thought, but as we are following you now, uh, where we saw that there in that space of time. Now, so as a result of not noticing that we then do have firewalls and uh, strong security systems that are happening too, and change the accounts and change the access rights because now you don't just enter with just a password, there are several levels. Then in addition, we back up our, we back our data so that it's not uh, destroyed just by hackers or to be destroyed by anything. So we have built um, walls around our systems to protect it. All right, and supposing someone breaks into your offices and the manager and goes out with computers, what really would they have done? First of all, we back off site. We don't. Uh, we're not naive to back our data in the same location. And uh, this year, we'll be implementing a robust disaster recovery program that allows us to, even if there should be uh, destruction of our computers, we can come on. We can come almost back on as long as we can get the, another computer because we have uh, sites where we work. Kind of cloud computing. Uh, sure. Talk to us, Madam, about internal corruption. Do people do you have inside uh, have some bad? Over the last uh, maybe six or seven years, there's been significant work done to clean out your And uh, we have certainly had instances of uh, malpractice by our own staff in collusion with uh, unscrupulous uh, persons. In the public, uh, we have and we have put in a robust uh, disciplinary mechanism uh, that investigates and gives the staff who has been implicated an opportunity to defend themselves, and then a whole host of sanctions that are available depending on the offence committed. Uh, once in a while, they do come through, and that's why that mechanism is in place. So. Uh, Lira is basically much cleaner institutions than it was uh, previously, but indeed there have been uh, some instances. Do you pay people on We try, not as much as uh, we did uh, when we started. We, in 1991, I think we were at the top, we were in the top five in our spares. Uh, that has been eroded by inflation, the consumer price index is overtaken. I mean, we, we can't match with it. The number of uh, private sector who are now taking more people because we have a, we have a good training system and so we have ready tax people and when a number of companies come and just find you know, reports yeah so that that's been a bit of a challenge uh, however to mitigate uh, the inadequate uh, the inability to pay competitively we put in welfare systems we put in. Uh, Welfare measures, we put in motivational measures, we do training as part of a way of retaining staff. And the, so we expose staff to many other ways of retaining them rather than just, just the salary. Oh, but still, you probably want, we would want to raise salaries. I would certainly want to raise salaries because you see, to train a tax person takes about five years. Now, I don't want to train somebody, spend 30, 40 million on them, and tomorrow somebody takes them because they are paying. 200,000 more than I can pay his staff. So it's, it's important that those who generate this revenue are secure and don't want to be moving uh, because they have financial needs at home. 
Madam, talk to us about the tax variation between pairs you earn and the rich man's tax. It's coming. Uh, we'll we'll get it before the end. Let's talk about water. Uh, you will introduce a tax of water. Why did you do that? No. <laughs> it, 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 it impacts on health and the world. Absolutely. The, the, the debate on water in the people is very interesting. Very interesting. It's taken dimensions that um, I did not expect. Now, to begin with, we've always had VAT on water since VAT was introduced in 1996. So it's always been VAT. It started at 17%, I think later in 2010 to 18%. So we've always had it. Now, last year, uh, there was a because the price of water was also very high and it was affecting consumers, especially the manufacturers who produce drinks, for example, who use water in their processes, uh, as a way of uh, reducing or helping reduce costs. It was thought that if uh, VAT is brought to 0% rather than 18%, we would see an immediate uh, reduction in the selling prices. For example, even in the water bill, expected to see uh, water bills come down or the selling prices of products coming down. It did not work out that way. And the reason it didn't is because those who produce piped water, which is used in manufacturing and in the homes, uh, were incurring VAT in the inputs of making that water. However, because in selling it, they couldn't claim back VAT, they couldn't put VAT in the final invoice, they could not claim it back at the time of selling. So is what they would then do, which is allowed in law, you claim it back from government. So we got so the right of paying VAT on the other cost. Absolutely, we were paying, we were, they were in a net refund position, and this became, which means that every taxpayer was actually refunding, because you see what, what we used to refund the, 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 the producers of water. It's taxes. So every taxpayer is refunding this person. You know, and, and, it, and that's why we didn't even see the prices come down. Right. And how will oil, oil impact, before we hear from the listeners, how will oil impact on our tax collections? Oil is expected to generate um, significant revenue because we have good reserves uh, between, I believe, 2.2 and 2.8 billion barrels in the 20 or so wells which have been drilled. Um, when that oil is refined and exported, we expect that, um, I, I don't have the accurate figures, I have figures I think of 2011 or 2010, we expect that what we collect in eight months, nine months of the year, we'll be collecting from just um, the oil alone. Really? Yes, absolutely. It's significant. So that about 1.75 uh, you know, effects of Elections. Yes, it's, 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 it's actually quite significant for him. Yeah, that's remarkable. Listen, as this is special on Radio 1, you can call it now. Tonight, will it be possible for you to realize its revenue targets is financial, considering the state of the economy and the limited tax base? So, this is the revenue authority. You can call it now. Our number is 0414 048 111 031. 0312 and you call it. Please tell us your name and where you are calling. Spectrum, hello. Hello. You're live on Spectrum, your name? Okay. All right. Okay. We have a caller on the line. Okay. Yes, sir, your name? My name is Oweri. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Oweri. You're training, you have... Hello? Please talk to us. Hello? 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 Yes, sir, your name? My name is Owen. Yes, Mr. Owen, please go on. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank the Federal Authority for the good work they are doing. But uh, there are certain things which uh, they need to revisit. Because sometimes when you buy, for example, you buy a vehicle at $10,000 on the internet and you even show them that you have bought a truck but they give you a value of about twelve thousand dollars 
and this is where the problem comes in where people try to forge here and there. But some women who can't forge you find that you are overburdened by taxi, which actually if they were to charge you the actual price you bought a vehicle at the other side, then it would be not be a problem. I'm requesting you are a and the government in general to rethink and actually revise the way they tax people. Alright, so John Hello. Yes, sir, your name? Yes, Come on in. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, go on. Okay. Okay. I wanted to find out about what happened to some of the less paying. How do you say you are saying that the players to an athlete from one and started to or to start up by what happened to the next day? Hey, as you are. Okay. Spectrum, I'll, I'll ask you to speak a little bit louder so we can hear you. Spectrum, hello? Hello. Yes, sir, your name? My name is Rona. Rona, yes. Now, my question is uh, going directly to Commissioner. There are those uh, clearing farms. They work with the way to clear for special energy points. Many of them, they misbehave this clearing agency, they misbehave taking wrong figures to the importers and to the business people. But we don't know how to go about this. Because at the end of it, so we even say to know what we're supposed to pay in the They come up with any figures, they start with saying that we can reduce this figure, we can talk to the URA, we can give you know, the standard of how we should go calculate our, our tax liability. Why then should they be talking about giving us the figures that we say that we can reduce that? How do we go about the corporate want to raise some issues? Thank you. All right. Hello. So, yes, sir, your name? This is Raul Group calling from Pakistan. Uh, let us take this uh, scenario. I also say that the normal tax uh, uh, process of individuals, that somebody has got his capital invested in a certain business that within a period of not even more than six months is already being taxed. You mean within that period of time, well, that money will have accumulated, recovered the capital, capital invested. Then the Thank you. All right. Spectrum, Okay. Let's get back to the studio so we can get answers. Madam. Thank you very much. I'll take a few questions and pass on the others to the Simons. Um, on the vehicle valuation raised uh, by Mr. Oweri, uh, first of all, the price you pay, for example, if you're going to India or China or Dubai, where most of these vehicles come from, is not necessarily the customs value because the customs value is the price plus insurance plus freight up to the port of Mombasa. So they CIA. CIA. It's not just people <coughs> being CIA. Uh, a lot of people bring us uh, an invoice that says, I, I paid $2,000. But you're charging me $2,500. It's because there, there has to be. Uh, you, you have to factor in insurance. That's number one. Number two, uh, depending on what charges you have paid elsewhere, not every vehicle is, is going to be the same irrespective of where it comes from. Um, three, we also look at the year of manufacture because it has a big impact on, and we're talking about these vehicles, not new vehicles. We don't have problems with new vehicles. It's the used vehicles. It's the year of manufacture that also determines what customs value uh, is accepted for uh, payment of taxes. However, um, my advice to, to Mr. Weir and several others, because this has been quite uh, it's, been an issue it's been an issue for a long time, it became subject of a court case, which we, we won, uh, is to use the, our, our uh, appeals mechanism, because there is an appeals mechanism. Nobody should take away anyone's right to appeal and to use the expertise we have, there must be an engagement between the person who is not satisfied with the customs authority and also production of genuine documents. This is an area where we have seen serious forgery of, of documents. And on our side, what we have done is to, to continually, continually do research. Uh, we, we visit the internet regularly where these people buy these vehicles that's that's open information, but we also go into those markets and research where uh, the cars are coming from so that we have knowledge that 
they can bounce off when they bring in their babies. Okay, Pears Yuan. Uh, on Pears Yuan, I'm going to ask Simon and I'm going to ask Simon. Thank you very much. I guess that was OJ and the next verse. OJ is asking, what is the implication of raising the threshold from 130,000 to 135,000? It means that, like Alan has already explained, people are not have more disposable income. Now, fundamentally, they should know that, for example, before the rates change, if I was handing, say, 200,000, I'd pay tax of 7,000 shillings. What it means now, now that the threshold is at 235,000, if I'm handing 250,000, I'll pay tax of 1,500 shillings. Yes, that's what it is. Right. Then you can get the figures of the losses that they took. That is the other thing right now. It can get inside. Let's continue. Go on. Let's talk about one of these Clearing farms. Okay. Thanks again, Donald. Welcome. Thank you very much. But um, what, what we want to come out clear on is that uh, as much as possible, we are going to try and empower the taxpayers themselves with the knowledge to be able to do some of their liability. To a very great extent, we are trying to put as much information as possible on our website. In our website, we are we are put their information how to put uh, some of these taxes, how to do some of our services, and uh, what I can promise this in the very near future. We are working on how to uh, we're working on keeping there some simple tasks that we can do, such as say, if you have some kind of system. Can I just add something? Yes. We, we have a, uh, a and then our website is ura.go.ug and uh, our email is services at ura.go.ug I would certainly love to see uh, Ronald make that and it is true we have actually had this before. The clear ladies behave to be then call them in and this um because they belong to associations who have called it conduct, so we call in the association because we do the issues. Uh the uh, we may actually terminate a license because of malpractice, so they miss to form the member of the public and of course so missing for uh misrepresenting the yeah, so basically these they are registered with new you can make your That's right, that's right. Let's talk about new business. How long do the new business operate? Okay. Perfect. Okay. This depends on the tax types you are registered for. For example, we say that uh, the tax profits and tax on profits, that is the question card, is an annual tax. Very thirty percent. That is the registered as a company. Yeah? Now, it is not true that the next six months will be liable for the first one. It's only for the You pay it even in the first year. There is provision on the first year, which is an estimate of what the other one will be liable for the end of the year. And then, you have six months after the end of the year, we will need to pay the full tax. And then, it's not a must that you pay this. Supposing you incur the loss, it means you won't have any tax to pay. However, such a person will have been registered for VAT as well. And VAT being your monthly tax, if you make taxable supply and this information is available, you will be assessed and will be to pay. So it is not true that uh, you are liable to operation back within six months of operation, then you are <coughs> not started making profits. But yes, depending on what you registered for, you may be liable for other taxes, <coughs> like operation tax. Like, no, no, like, uh, for example. The, Pay as you earn if you are an employer. Pay as you earn applies if you are applied. Okay. Not necessarily. Even if you are a law, you pay like that. As long as you are paying taxes that are above the salary that are above the threshold, you are required. Alright, okay. right. We have to go back then if you are a law, you have to talk about the tax versus GDP ratio. There is another one. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. 12.1 to 13.1 to the past. Yeah. Where is it going? Well, it's actually. The region is 18 percent. Okay. Why are you saying? 
there are many reasons. One of it is the structure of the economy, we are basically an agricultural economy, and the areas where we are seeing greatest growth, which is I think in uh, uh, construction and uh, uh, the services area, are not taxable. Well, they are taxable, but they have a lot of incentives as well. For example, in, in, in the construction, uh, we're dealing with the equipment that's heavy equipment that's that we can do in that sector. Um, the tax to GDP ratio this year is anticipated to get to 13 29 Well, let's say for 14%, yeah. and it's still way below uh, the, the sub saharan average of 18%. Um, the measures we are putting in place is to get to the 14%. Why we are still not, why we are not across the team yet is because also we have a lot of over 40% of the business in Uganda and the form and we are not having the, 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 the citizen registration that in fact a citizen identification. Nationalized, so we need that nationalized. Definitely. Right, well, we have to go at this point. The economy is largely from Ogonja, I think. We get a certain time, Mr. Dan. Two years ago, Banks, Victoria, and the Republic. We have to go. Thank you very much, Mr. Dan, and the Commissioner General of the Republic. Thank you very much for coming to the Republic. Mr. Simon, you have the coordinator of the Department of Domestic Services. Thank you very much for coming to the Republic. And Mr. Simon, the Chief Governor of the Republic, the Supervisor of the Republic of the Republic. Yes, that's the domestic Thank you very much. Thank you for joining in a video. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everybody wins.